As we mark the one year anniversary of Prince's death from an accidental fentanyl overdose, the fight against the nation's opioid epidemic rages on. But are we making strides in the battle here in Minnesota? Dr. Roger LaRoche is an addiction specialist at Alina Health. Doctor, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. We do appreciate it. It's such an important subject, especially to bring up again here a year later. But in your opinion, what do you think? Are we making strides here uh, to fight this epidemic? Well, yes and no. Yes, there's never been more federal dollars and state dollars, you know, to combat it. There's never been more awareness as now. But it's really tough to overtake a disease that's exploding. I don't know if you've heard some of the statistics. I mean, you know, f America as a whole is maybe 5% of the world's population, yet it consumes about 90% of all the world's supply of opiates. So this is a national epidemic, as they say, and it's hard to keep up with that with, with care. And recent efforts we've covered locally, um, also locally and federally as well, uh, lawmakers trying to limit the number of pills doctors can prescribe or create a mandatory opioid registry to stop people from doctor shopping. Do you mm -hmm. think these efforts will make a difference? I do. I definitely do. You know, it's important to remember that there's about, oh, maybe in the past 12, 13 years, there's already four times more opiate prescriptions prescribed now. So it's much more available. And, you know, there's nothing more ent enticing for a kid or for an adult to use a prescription that might be in the medicine cabinet of a family member. So definitely that would help. But, you know, part of the reason that it's so deadly, too, though, is because of now the synthetic components that's laced in it. So we're, it's kind of a double whammy. We're fighting this battle against prescription drugs and against the synthetic drugs that are coming from China. Yeah, and explain that a little bit more. Why are these drugs so addictive? Yeah, well, very good question. You know, addiction, just taking a broad look at this, addiction is a disease. It affects about uh, maybe 13% of the population. As compared to, say, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, singularly might be 5 to 9%. So automatically we're struggling with the disease but it has a bad rap people are not talking about it so it stays hidden and intentionally parents kind of turn a blind eye students are very smart and with opiates they are available everywhere and let's talk about that shining some light on that what are the signs we should be looking for because some of these aren't really that obvious yeah very good point very good point you know uh, what we always tell people is look for behavioral changes so the in individual may become more quiet, more shy, or the opposite, more boisterous. And then something that we don't think about, there may be kids that suddenly the parents say, you know, that's funny, you've always been a C student, now you're getting A minuses. They may be treating some underlying psychiatric conditions. So we never say look for bad signs, we say for look, look for any change in their personality. Any change in their physical presentation is a good tip off. And we always hear that these are uncomfortable conversations, but they need yes. to be happening to avoid any kind of heartbreaking. They end. need to be happening. I'll tell you, some of the latest data shows that 10% of high school seniors have used opiates in the past month. Wow. So we're talking about our family, our kids, everyone around us. And 4% of the United States population is addicted to and abusing opiates just in the past year. So it's, it's all around us, and we've got to have the conversation, which is why I really appreciate you uh, doing this. It's oh. important to do. We appreciate you being on tonight. Thank you, Dr. LaRoche.